Hey guys, we are in Soap Lake, Washington. Yeah, it's a lot, a lot of smoke here. It's following us everywhere. Yeah, it it's is. It's very hazy. It looks like there's fog everywhere. Yeah, it's super hazy here, unfortunately. And we'll give you a look around here in a minute. We'll show you a little bit of the park and show you the lake and the smoke and all that fun stuff. Um, and we also have a little RV repair we have to do today. Yeah, we were sitting out here the other day and I looked at the camper. I have a habit of trying to look at the camper all the time and I noticed something wrong and it's the fender. The front of the fender on the passenger side, the door side of our camper is screws missing and it's starting to pull apart. And we luckily saw it before it caught a gust of wind and tore the whole fender off because yeah. it's probably pretty close to that. And we'll give you a look at it now. Yeah, let's show you what it looks like. <laughs> get run over by a remote control car right here. <laughs> so here's what we noticed when we were sitting outside. The fender, I noticed the caulk line wasn't connected. And it's because this is starting to separate. That is a self-tapping sheet metal screw. That's what it looks like that they put this on here with and they just screwed it through without putting a nut or any kind of thing on the back to keep it from backing off. So I'm guessing as we've driven around, these have vibrated loose and fallen out going down the road. These are our original parts. Self-tapping screw made for sheet metal. And we're gonna replace them with these bolts they have a hex head on the top. And then we're gonna put this nylon stop washer, hex washer on the inside, or hex nut, stop nut on the inside. And the nylon part inside the threads should keep it from backing off in the future as it vibrates. That's the way it should have been done from the factory. Let me restart this. I've got these started on here, so I'm going to have to grip the back of the, the stop nut with the washer or with the pliers and turn this side to tighten it in. this one from backing off again. Now we need to put in a couple more here and check the other ones to see how tight they are. So we finished up. We replaced these three. These two are the ones that fell out initially and caused this initial separation and I pulled this one, so we had it out, so we might as well replace it as well. So we have these three, and they're on there tight now. The whole thing is pretty tight. If these others start backing out, we'll replace them as well. We bought enough to replace them all if we need to. But I think it should be good now. These were the main ones I didn't want to come out because these will be the ones that would catch wind if it separates. If this front pulled apart when we were going down the road at highway speeds, it could peel the whole fender off. So this should keep the front end and we should be good. If we need to, we'll replace these other ones as well. Someone's hiding under the table. She's pouting a little bit, I think. This campsite is really nice and I want to give you a look around. Despite the smoke, which I'm about to show you, uh, this campground is just beautiful and lovely. And uh, let me show you around a little bit. It is about 3 p.m. right now, and this smoke 
rolled in, I guess, during the night. Because in the morning, we got up and very smoky. You see there in the distance, so that's the lake, but you can see the other side of the lake just vaguely. It's almost completely obscured by the smoke. I have to say that this is the worst the smoke has been for us. Which is, um, you know, it's not a lot of fun. It's much less fun for people actually having to deal for the fires. But definitely not fun either when you're just out somewhere and there's all the smoke. This is a really nice campground though. There's a lot of tent spots. If I turn here. There's two rows of tent spots. It looks like there's probably at least 40 tent spots. Oh well, no, there's probably more than that because they're double sided. So there's a lot of tent spots. They're really nice. There's really nice grass here. Uh, you can see to the left there's a basketball court, a, a really nice kids playground. There's um, a pool, a hot tub, and an adults only hot tub which is nice which is on the other side of the park. There's several pull through RV spots as well, which is one of the, we are in probably the most basic of the pull through spots, uh, but there's some really, really nice, even larger deluxe spots you can get to. And the shade, look at all these trees. The shade has been wonderful. And then, you know, the lake itself is just beautiful. It's just really unfortunate right now with all this smoke, it's hard to see. It is Soap Lake, which is their claim is that it is one of the um, largest bodies of water with the largest mineral count in it. So the minerals are very, very high. So high that apparently there's no fish in the lake. In fact, the only thing they say that lives in the lake are possibly some small shrimp. Um, and then of course there's you know, birds and stuff that live along the edges and everything, but no fish and high mineral content. So it's pretty interesting. Are you, are you talking to me? Are you talking to me? Oh, hello, Miss Abby. Here is our campsite. These trucks, my God. So here is our campsite, and there's tons of shade, which is so nice. And you can see there's a fire pit and a nice picnic table. Hey, what do you think of this place, huh? Does it meet the Abbey approval rating? Hmm? <laughs> Here's a look at some of the tools we carry around. I thought people might be interested. I had to go, I had a big shop before we moved out onto the road. And I had a lot of duplicate tools that accumulate over the years, as many people who have garages and shops will know. You'll buy a tool for a project and then find the tool you already had after the project. So you wind up with multiple tools. So I had to weed through everything. And this is what I've basically carried out with us on the road. I try to keep things sort of organized, but it's hard in such a small space to keep everything organized. These are my general hand tools. Some tape, a rubber mallet, stapler, some utility scissors. And we got some uh, Gorilla Tape in here in case something needs a quick repair right away while we're on the road. Got some uh, the gas pipe tape. thread, yeah, pipe thread tape for the gas. I've got some Teflon tape in there also. I also had to do a mod on the camper. The uh, waste handles from dumping 
were vibrating loose. So I took the handles off and put some of this thread tape around the threads and screwed them back on to keep them from vibrating loose. We almost lost one of them. It was about to fall off. And I've got different bits and some various screws and things in there. In this other case, I keep consumable goods generally. Things I think we'll use up. You can see the effect of all of the dirt roads. <laughs> yeah. Dust gets sucked into the back of this yeah. thing as we go down the road. But here we have some some tape for the the air conditioning vents to plug any holes that might be there. Got some Gorilla Glue, some staples. This is uh, gasket tape for the roof if we have to do any roof repairs. Some split loom for running wiring. To keep wiring from snagging, you should always put it in this stuff and zip tie it together so it won't snag as easily. This is to hold some of that. Here's our nuts that we're going to keep the, the bolts and the nylon nuts for repairing what we just did if we have any more problems. Some felt pads and to keep things from slamming. This is my con mostly consumable stuff there in this. And this is my main, when you have a problem, go to it toolkit. And uh, I can thank my mom and dad for getting us this. Around the time we got married, we've had this a very long time. It's come in very handy. And I love the case it's in. It's got this molded plastic case. It's very tough. But it has metric and standard in there. So you can pretty much work on anything you have a problem with unless it's like a jeweler screw or a very small weird part. RVs do have some weird tips on uh, the heads of some of the interior screws. So I bought a couple of special bits for that. But besides that, this has covered just about everything. And uh, this is my electrical bag. So it has electrical tools, a fish tape, some wire nuts, wire strippers. Got a multimeter here for troubleshooting electrical wiring and problems in the RV if we have them. Well, that stuff came in really handy when we you installed the Fantastic Fan. Yeah, I used this when we did the Fantastic Fan to get the wiring all put in right and make sure everything's correct. I have a salt, small soldering iron and uh, more wire nuts and things. Some fuses. We had to replace a few fuses, so I've got a few extra fuses, bus fuses. The inside of the camper uses automotive 12 volt bus fuses, so you can pick them up at just about any parts store that has automotive parts, which is very handy on the road. And then something that you should definitely have if you full time in an RV is a caulking gun, because that is the number one thing we've seen we've had to do repairs on is the caulk and the seal. The, the seals on the roof, they use a, a self-leveling sealant up there. And some of that was not put on with the care it should have been on the roof. So I've touched that up. And also, this is handy for fixing the seams where you have issues. Uh, there's some weather seals around the windows and things we had problems with, we had to go back over and fix. Also, uh, make sure you don't cover any holes in the bottom of your windows if you do that because those are made to drain out moisture when it gets in there but this is pretty much my selection of tools if you look up in the back of our messy back of our camper here <laughs> it's very messy. Uh, you'll see a floor jack that is the one big tool oh, I kept yeah, you can't really see it. it's in the back you can see the wheel of it between the generator there But it lives all the way up in the front because it's a little heavy. It's not terribly bad, but it's there in case we have a disaster situation in the truck. We just had a disaster situation <laughs> right behind us. Michelle's sunglasses fell off her head and one That's lens okay. fell out. I'll so get it. I'll get it. I'll pop it back in. I do not have the tools to work on that. <laughs> But yeah, this you can kind of see what we carry with us back here in our, we have the camper top on the back of our truck. Yeah, um, we it's have a, a mess right now. Yeah, it's a mess and it's also dirty. We've been on a lot of dirt roads lately and the camper shell unfortunately does not keep that out of there. It, it gets all over everything. Oh, this also is my drill. So yeah, I your it, drill. It is a necessity 
for doing any kind of mod or, or DIY project in a camper, you're probably going to need a drill also. <laughs> for sure. Uh, and this then, has our car wash stuff. Yeah, we've got car wash stuff, That's cleaning like, stuff. Electrical wiring stuff. Yeah, more wiring. Residence. You can see we have a step stool there we carry with us and a roto pack uh, gas can that Jesse's right by right there. That's additional fuel for our generator. Yeah, and then we, yeah, fuel for the generator. And then uh, to the left are our two solar panels and some cushions from our dinette that we don't use that we just sort of put in there to cushion the solar panels. Um, and then, of course, the most important thing we carry with us is uh, ramen noodles. Oh, so. yes. Cup noodles. <laughs> cup noodles. <laughs> uh, yeah, we, we like the cup noodles. We're going to get rid of a lot of this stuff. The, eventually, the solar panels are going to live on the roof. Once they live on the roof, they can come out of here. We can get rid of some of this other stuff in here and open this up more. Yep, so that's a look at our uh, back of our truck. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed looking at my dingy truck camper. <laughs> if you enjoyed looking at my dingy truck camper, give us a subscription. I'm sure I'll be doing mods and things again in the future, and you'll be seeing these tools on occasion. It seems to be like part of this kind of life is you, you've got to be able to do little tiny repairs as you go. Sort of like when you own a home, if you allow things to go until they become a crisis point, it gets expensive and hard to fix. But if you're constantly looking at your home or your camper, which our camper is now our home, if you're constantly looking while things start going bad, you can catch them early, like we did with this fender. If we had waited and not done it, the next time we towed, we may have torn that whole fender off. So little, little things staying on top of them early seem to be a big deal in a camper where everything is built to such a flimsy standard. All right, thanks for coming along, checking out our tools and this little repair, minor repair. It's a reality of life on the road that if someone's going to live full time, they're going to need to be able to do these kind of things. Yeah, and thanks for taking a look at Soap Lake, Washington with us. Hopefully when we get on the other side of the Cascades, we'll have better visibility and some nicer views to show you. Thanks for checking it out. We'll see you guys next time. Come on. Take six. Take six. Thanks for, <laughs> thanks for watching my wife laugh at me as I was trying to put screws into the, <laughs> into the side of the camper and, and dropping the... <laughs> I was entertained. Greetings, my gamers. We're just struggling with this one. I'm doing great. I don't know what you're talking about. Well, then go ahead. Great, Mr. Gray. Go on. I'm trying Spear to, your, but you keep, your you're not giving here. me an edit point to start. Okay, okay, okay. Thanks for hanging out with us. Uh, <coughs> I can't do this if you're just going to laugh constantly. <laughs> it's all your fault. It's hanging your fault. out with it's us? All... Yeah. Thanks for joining us for this minor repair. <laughs> I can't say we're hanging out for a repair because my dear wife starts laughing at me every time. <laughs> as she was laughing at me as I was trying. You did a fine job. I know I did a fine job. I always do a fine job. I guess. I think we had like 30 we're gonna videos. Run, we're gonna run out of memory on this thing. Alright, let's do it. Thanks for joining us for this minor repair on the road. Uh, these kind of things pop up and you just gotta take care of them before they could become big issues. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, top. I thought you. Do you like my tools? <laughs> Thanks for hanging out, bud. <laughs> cool. What's your favorite song in which Toto album is it off of? <laughs> I bless the rains. That's some fine repair technique. Thank you. <laughs> fix not you're not the only one that can fix stuff around here i never claimed i was <laughs> <laughs>